apart on purpose by attorneys because attorneys benefit. Now everybody's watching how um, Microsoft is being nailed again for you know insider trading and all these things. Microsoft sits on the Association of Corporate Counsel. It is the general counsel, so it's redistributing itself. And who suffers? The stockholders and people who work for Microsoft. Who gets paid? The attorneys playing this game, which is insider trading, the same thing that they're charging Microsoft for. Because it's the attorney that owns the corporation there. Please, please, please wrap your mind around this cartoon because it's going to come down to the point where it's hurting everybody. And at that point, it is Nazi Germany and everybody can't scream out because they're actually in chains. Just recently, we, we saw the geoengineering that created havoc and hell down in Georgia and Alabama. Okay, so everybody was put into fear. Now, they're expecting a little bit more snow here coming soon. And so they have the National Guard on ready, on standby. That is the FEMA camp that you guys have been waiting for. It's already there. Okay, you guys went into fear. You guys can't drive or shit in the wintertime. Two inches of snow, idiots. You killed each other. Because you you're in a out. hurry to get to your job. Yes, you're in a hurry to do everything but protect humanity. Two inches of snow has a National Guard on ready, on standby. That is a FEMA camp. That's called urban pacification. You said, oh no, my bottle's gone, give me my pacifier. Enough is enough. The devil is down in Georgia. Enough is enough. I mean, these, these things are disgusting. And if you want to know what's going to happen to you, those of you that have accepted this and consented to these things, and you went out driving like nuts, the Red Cross is a holding facilitation or mechanism by which to pick up prisoners of war. 1864 Geneva Convention. Every time you hotline that 911 to come save you because you were so stupid. And, and I'm not going to apologize for that one. Two inches of snow. I, I've lived in the mountains. I've lived everywhere. I, I don't drive like an idiot. I'm never in a hurry because I'm always considering human beings. And yet you were gridlocked. You were absolutely disgustingly killing each other because you had to hurry because you have to get this done and you have to get this done and children were left in schools overnight and you have to get to the time clock and punch that time clock on time you know so you can pay your taxes but you're the keep most your important. job pay your taxes keep paying those debt notes that are that are basically backed by your own earning potential but you're the Death. most important. You are the living being. Your corporation that you work for is a fiction. You sent your kids to school that day, and they spent overnight in the Hitler youth camps away from you. Because of your inactions and your actions. And now so many are stuck into the prison camps through the operation of the Red Cross, through the operation of FEMA, through the operation of the governor that's over FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Act. Those things are not to fix the roads. Those are means of, and mechanisms of garnering you into institutionalized states. Go look at your state's emergency rules. Go look at what their emergency states of being are. That's you. You've got to stop allowing Governor Pilot to confiscate you. We're going to take a break real quick. And we're back. And you're listening to After Hours with Bo and Tammy right here on thesechangingtimes.ning.com. Um, again, we are a listener-supported radio station. Morning. If you'd like to donate, just go to the homepage. And over on the right, you'll see a donate button. Um, every little bit helps. It helps Patty keep us on the air as she's already expanded to uh, do so. But was going to get, I know we've been talking about 
a lot of the crap that's going on, but we do have uh, hope. Uh, and Bull wants to go into the uh, what he dubs the Attorney Surety Roundup, which I love listening to on the Bull and Rocco show. And so I'll just give it to you. Well, before I go into all that, um, first of all, we're not anarchists. We do have a law. Okay, we call it the public law because it has to do with uh, harm against a uh, public vessel, which is you, the human beings. And it's basically, you have a choice. That's why we named the website chooseyourside.org. Okay? And under the public law, it says to do no harm. Okay? Under their private acts and acts of commerce that they're selling you as a law, you got six million codes, statutes, regulations, policy, all this stuff that you're expected to know because ignorance of the law is no excuse because they've publicated they published it uh, publicly uh, you know for you to read so you're just expected to know all these things all right we're not expecting you to know that here okay under the public law system there's do no harm okay and if you perpetrate harm upon a human being you will be held accountable that's that's the name of the game and so why so many want to come back and sell the law merchants laws over ours is highly suspicious because Absolutely. it's just it's just common sense Absolutely. what the attorneys are ramming down your throats is not common sense it's for them to profiteer off you and, and the medical industry you know a bit back um, I had covered lethal injection and the use of these medications and and of course as she comes on and she calls me insane and then at the very end of our conversation you know I'm, I'm giving her the evidence of these things and showing her how the United States Incorporated kills human beings you know I didn't get into the the contracts with the FDA and the Ethics Commission but she comes back finally at the end uh, trying to maintain title and she says I'm in the medical industry and I said you know short and sweet I already knew that the only entity that defends genocide would be the perpetrator of genocide and it's the same as any entity that defends rape or defends somebody being kidnapped they have profit in rape they have profit in kidnapping. They have profit in human trafficking. That is the only reason that they're defending those things. Not because they're stupid. It's because they're agents. And they have interest in these things occurring against human beings. All right. So to give you yet again another glimpse on the writing of the wall for the shape of things to come that have come right here and now we've got um, the new surety being held at Northern right that means they have to use the attorney of the offset congressional bankruptcy so for this so-called judge that issued this order to have Rockwell arrested and now holding him as a political prisoner and make no mistake, he's a he's a prisoner of war because this is war, basically. Not basically, it is war, fourth generation and otherwise. Okay, the attorneys would love nothing more than to get a civil war going, and they've been setting it up pretty good between the cops and the citizens so far. I've been covering that. Uh, Let's talk about some accountability for some of these attorneys. All right. Here's a quick one here from the uh, Twin Cities. Uh, lawyers accused of assault on driver. 64-year-old attorney was charged Monday with a gross misdemeanor and two misdemeanors after he allegedly assaulted a woman he encountered in St. Paul and called her racial slurs. Oh, yeah, I'm an attorney. I'll be able to do whatever I want. Okay. Get away with it as you, I, you know, 64 years, let's see, uh, seven years of law school, so that means he was probably uh, an attorney when he was 25 years old, okay, so almost 40 years as an attorney getting away with this crap, 
All right, officers were called at 9.54 p.m. Saturday and to uh, Grand Avenue and Lexington Parkway. Uh, Siani Chan, 23, told police she was parked in front of Domino's Pizza with her sister and two children waiting for food. You know, she probably had to scrape together on the budgets that the attorneys have allowed these people, all of us. When a man walked by her car and yelled something at her, the man later identified as Schulte, continued to yell and hit the car, or hit the hood of her car, the criminal complaint said. Chan got out, tried to stand between him and her car. Schulte punched her in the arm. He was also calling Miss Chan, who is Asian, racial slurs loudly enough so that the others in the area heard him, the complaint said. Now, this is interesting that this is being maintained in the mainstream media because of what had happened back at the, the introduction of the CIA production of the KKK. That was a legislator, Simmons. And in that, he came in and he says, we're all racist. Nobody saw that that was a legislator. Nobody saw that that was an attorney. And so everybody assumes, oh my gosh, there's racism. We need to pay more taxes to combat these things. And that's how they get you with hearts and minds. But now in the mainstream media, they're outing the racist. They're outing the criminal which is an attorney hating human beings and only viewing them as objects. That guy's an accountant. He likes human beings as much as he can count them in court. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Um, so Schulte was arrested at 11.45 p.m. Saturday at his apartment. According to a Ramsey County jail log, Schulte told police he was leaving a meeting and was angry because the vehicle Miss Chan was occupying was parked far from the curb. Yeah, not complying to our codes and statutes that we have so diligently worked to set up for you citizens. And again, as a fiction, his rights have always been reserved over yours. And who is belittling her to make her feel like a criminal. He also admitted to calling her some silly racist things, but did not recall punching or pushing her, saying that he blacked out. Mm -hmm. Schulte, who is a criminal defense attorney, declined a Pioneer Press request for an interview made Monday through the jail. He was admitted to the Minnesota Bar in 1994, and no discipline is listed on his public record, according to the Minnesota, Minnesota Officers, Minnesota Office of Lawyers Professional Responsibility website. Well, yeah, he's never been held accountable before. Ah, uh, but this he a, he says he blacked out. So you know, we need a psych eval. We need to make sure that you know he doesn't have something wrong with him, don't we? That's right. Get him on diagnosed. Absolutely. We need to make sure he's competent to, to stand trial for these things and and the whole gamut of attorney work product doctrine and and every every other aspect of the industrialized or the uh, institutionalization of what the surety is. We need to get him diagnosed as soon as possible. Otherwise, how can we repair him according to bond and rebonds? He's been. Probably He's been reborn. Hallelujah. You probably have to hire an attorney. Which is um, ironic justice there, isn't it? Absolutely. All right. Over to the New York Post. Lawyer charged in resurrection of plunder plot at SI Cemetery. Okay. This is just uh, hot February 10th, 2014. Lawyer named interim president of Staten Island Cemetery after its bookkeeper was nabbed in 2012 for defrauding the charity has been charged with continuing the theft. Continuing the theft. So this attorney was put in there 
after the last attorney was stealing. Okay, now, everybody who wants to recuse a judge and who wants to fire their attorney and hire a new one, read this case. Uh, a lawyer who was put in charge of the Staten Island Cemetery that had been looted by its bookkeeper was busted Monday on charges of continuing the scam and stealing nearly $2 million more. Timothy Griff, uh, Timothy Griffin, 54, allegedly made six unauthorized wire transfers from the United Hebrew Cemetery to his attorney escrow account between October 2012 and January 3rd that and signed a written confession admitting that he did it to fund his struggling Bronxville law firm. Aww. Assistant Attorney General Chen Ho Chang said in court. Uh, Griffin, who formerly served as the Boneyard's lawyer, was named acting president by its board following the ouster of ex-president Arthur Friedman and his wife, Leanda, according to the state attorney general office. Leanda Friedman pleaded guilty last year and was sentenced to probation for embezzling more than $850,000 from the not-for-profit cemetery while working as its bookkeeper. Yeah, non-profit is 501c3, which is federally funded anyway. So, folks, everybody, listen, they just stole your money, and they're saying that it was theirs. Yeah, and listen what they use it for. You think that they use it to feed the poor or anything like that? No. Uh, this is how these psychopaths think. 30 said she used the money to fund lavish purchases of jewelry, electronics, and restaurant meals along with $9,000 she spent in Las Vegas while attending cemetery industry conventions there. Aww, and isn't that, isn't that something? Now this cemetery, if you go back to Matthew 27, this is the charity that they founded, right? Those pauper cemeteries where they put the um, Judas's silver that he gave back to him, they couldn't put it back in the treasury because it was what? Blood money. So he's out gambling blood money. That's you, human being, being trafficked. While this attorney is out having a, a nice time, he's living high on the hog. And this is not the first attorney. This is the second attorney replacing the other criminal attorney. Yep. So isn't that just lovely? Um, let's see. Both she and her hubby also agreed to pay more than one million dollars in restitution, and were permanently barred from the funeral and ceremony or cemetery businesses. It's always sad and shocking when we discover that someone used the charity as their own personal piggy bank. Eternal Attorney General Eric Schneiderman said following Griffin's arrest, and. This is the only one that hit the news. This, I guarantee you, everywhere there's an attorney involved, this kind of shit is going on. They were permanently, read that again, they were permanently... Permanently barred from the funeral and cemetery business. Business. Business, in general. So, apparently they're going to be stuffed and mounted when they die? They have to go to, go to like a taxidermist or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so alright enough of that one um, cover some cops for you cops that still think you're immune uh, let's see this is uh, some San Diego SD officer Christopher Hayes arrested San Diego police officer Christopher Hayes Christopher Hayes was arrested Sunday afternoon on suspicion of false imprisonment and misdemeanor sexual battery with four women. The district attorney's office is also investigating claims by two more women, make a total of six. Most of the cases involved claims that Hayes inappropriately touched women all in her 20s or 30s. Yeah, not them... Um, 60 year old women. He didn't uh, 
it cost them, uh, did he? Uh, during pat down searches of their bodies. Well, however, at a news conference Sunday afternoon, San Diego Police Chief Bill Lansdowne said that at least one of the two new cases involves more serious claims involving sexual contact that could involve felony charges. Okay, let's see. Hayes, 30 years old. Boy, his life is screwed now, isn't it? 30 years old. Okay. Probably uh, served in the war. He's already uh, indoctrinated. Well, I don't know. It doesn't say that, but uh, generally, lots of officers in that age bracket yeah. did some time in the military services. Uh, so he surrendered Sunday at the sheriff's substation in Rancho. Bernardo and was booked into the downtown jail at 1.30 p.m. And he's going to have a nice time in that jail with those people he's probably arrested. Some of them, you know. Right. Or just knowing that he's a cop. Yep. And that's um, their attorney's intent. <coughs> their attorney doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt the attorney. It doesn't hurt corporate counsel as they're discharging congressional bankruptcy. He was booked on two counts of false imprisonment and three counts of misdemeanor sexual Battery was later released on a hundred thirty thousand dollar bond. Where did he get that money at? He's a cop, a young cop. Yeah, must have had some side deals, had it stashed somewhere. Yep. Um. Or his parents so, are now being redistributed on his behalf. Yeah, they go after the family too. Um, if the district attorney charges Hayes. With the counts that he was arrested on, police said he could face up to seven and a half years in prison. That's hard time no matter what because he, he's former law enforcement in there. You know, law enforcement needs to realize they're being rolled over a corporate counsel, general counsel, board of directors, board of commissioners that commission you. And here it is, right in your faces. Judas, or the one with law, being politically cannibalized, which is political suicide. You're hanging yourselves. Okay, so we got another one here. Um, okay. Uh, as soon as I get my computer to cooperate. Okay. Themonitor.com. Customs officer accused of shooting girlfriend's brother in the face. In the face? Yep. McAllen, a U.S. Customs and Border Protection Officer. Protection Officer? Who's he protecting? The, uh, the um, finances of the state? Um, <laughs> protection Officer. Okay. Accused of shooting girlfriend's brother in the face. The parent ending to a domestic dispute, police Aww. said. Yeah, that would just about Sick. end it, I would guess. Sick. On Friday evening, 41-year-old Randall Wayne Sutterfield went before a McAllen municipal judge who formally charged him with criminal attempted murder. A municipal judge? Yeah. Normally, they don't have that jurisdiction. Are they going to try to get out on a technicality? We'll have to watch that one and make sure. Yeah, it's interesting. Police officers responded to the shooting shortly after 2.30 a.m. at the 5400 block of North 15th Street and said McAllen Police Chief Victor Rodriguez, Rodriguez um, the suspect had already left the scene, Rodriguez said. Uh, red crime scene tape lying the entrance of the North McAllen apartment complex where emergency responders rushed a man with a gunshot wound to the head to a local hospital. Investigators were able to identify Sutterfield and notify other agencies to help look for him. That led to U.S. Border Patrol agents arresting Sutterfield at the Falfurious checkpoint as he tried to leave the Rio Grande Valley, the chief said. Wow, so he's trying to run to Mexico. 
Yeah. It's not a good idea, Border Patrol. The CBP officer was formally charged with criminal attempted murder at a Friday evening arraignment in McAllen Municipal Court. Bond was set at $750,000 on the second degree felony charge. Wow. He was set to be transferred to, to Hidalgo County Jail. If convicted, he faces between 2 and 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 in fines. Okay. A human life is worth $10,000. Yeah. I mean, here they are. They're still charging them rent and stuff. But, okay, that's their laws. I don't care what laws they use on them as long as they're taken out and held accountable. Absolutely. I don't like the catch and release to, to 20 years because he'll just get out and do it again. And after he spends some time in prison and... Everybody kicks the shit out of him because he's an ex-cop. He's going to get his ass kicked over and over and over again unless he puts himself in segregation, which is what narcs do. And as everybody knows who knows any of the lingual, uh, or language of the prison industry, um, you know, a narc who goes into segregation is also going to get their ass kicked. So he's, got, he's looking forward to a, a, a really nice... Uh, quote, vacation, two to 20 year vacation. However, that allows him to be festered too, and I don't like the catch and release. And if you, you know, realize these things, please, please come to the other side. Choose your side. It's happening right now. Um, anybody who could uh, maintain that a concept is more important than a human being, um, especially for these attempted murders and everything else, you've got to realize that there's nothing more important than the human being. No more catch and release. Compassionate justice is the way to go. They need to be away from humanity or the ability to interact with humanity after they've been evidenced to commit such things, perpetrate such things. Okay, so uh, here the chief is uh, trying to play the good guy. We don't tolerate corruption or abuse within our ranks, and we will fully cooperate with any criminal or administrative investigation. Uh, following the Friday evening arraignment, Sutherfield's mother, Darren McLean, arrived outside McAllen Municipal Court late to see her son go before the judge. She said she doesn't believe the charge against him. He's a veteran. He's a Christian man, McLean said. He never, never would do anything like this unless he was in fear for his life. McLean said she learned of the shooting from Sutherfield's ex-wife about noon Friday. She said he wasn't trying to run when he was caught at the checkpoint. No, he was just going to go for a quick vacation, I guess, before yeah. he got locked up. Yeah. Um, well, I guess maybe that mother knew her son at one time, but... Um, after uh, being uh, conditioned by the military industrial complex, um, I don't think she knows him like she used to. But um, yeah, okay, that's about it on that one. Uh, and again, he could be a fall guy for the rest of everybody else, um, you know. The whole thing is set up and staged to be either thing. It could be occurring, or they might have just postured it to take him out. And, um, you know, who knows? That's, that's what they've used against humanity all this time. They pit and polarize parents against children, and children against parents, sister against brother, and brother against sister. And um, these things, this is what Revelation says. You know, here's mom screaming out, he's not that kind of being. He's a Christian, and creating these copy holds, by the way, Christian man and all of these things. But the thing is, is that, you know, yes, he could have been broken throughout time, or he could just be being used as a fall guy for somebody else. And, and to have the chief of police, normally an FBI agent, standing out there and saying, we fight corruption, uh, that also indicates that he's a fall guy, but like I said, um, something occurred, somebody's going to be held accountable for it. At this point in time, 
you have knowledge that you're working for a criminal enterprise, so whatever happens, happens. You can either walk away, choose your side, or stay there and, and continue to have these things occur upon you. Yeah, the redistri redistribution of these entities is picking up steam. I can't even keep up with all the stories coming up on my radar. Um, I'm trying to do a few of the, um, you know, most profound ones that I come across, or um, you know, like this was interesting about McGruff, the crime dog actor, getting 16 years for drugs and a grenade launchers, uh, multiple grenade launchers. Um, let's see, I I covered several in the Civil War being staged between cops and citizens on my YouTube channel a couple days ago and um, you know in that one they covered where that uh, cop had arrested that fireman for not moving the fire truck even though the fireman was following the uh, policy for the safest way to uh, you know park which was in front of the ambulance to keep the ambulance out of harm's way while they're treating victims now this is going on remember while victims are being treated that this fireman is uh, assisting with right and we've seen a lot of that this year with cops interfering in first responders responders works in order that people may die now, this isn't funny anymore. When a vehicle or whatever is more important than a human being, and you have to re realize, I know this is a radio show and everything else, but that's a fire truck in front of an ambulance or vice versa. Big flashy lights, big red thing. It's not likely um, a, a target for car accidents because people are unaware. And, you know, there wasn't any indication that the weather was bad or, or getting bad or a blizzard going on where you couldn't see the fire truck. This seems to be like an intentional action of corporate counsel by which to kill people who are there being treated by first responders and the tool of that was of course that cop directed to arrest the firefighter and now the cop's going to be the fall guy. Now another similar story I, I saw, I don't have it pulled up in front of me but um the uh, the guy, the spokesman for the SAFE Act, I believe it was, um, which has to do with uh, guns on school grounds, mm -hmm. was arrested for carrying a weapon on school grounds. Aww. I'll have to look that one back up. Um, what goes around comes around. God's not very happy using his name in vain, posting him, doing all of these things. And once he's able to open that book and realize what it says, his wrath will be made known. And it will happen in one hour. When you least expect these things, you're going to be picked up as a cop with a DUI or charged as a cop for shooting somebody in the face, charged as an attorney for embezzlement, Stealing cars that aren't reported stolen, robbing banks, robbing gas stations, you know, all of these things. In one hour, this will come upon you. Now, you know, again, okay, um, spending um, just a, another moment on that story with the uh, cop and fireman. Uh, does that seem like a common sense thing to do? Uh, I bet you dirt to dollars he was poked on by some corporate counsel attorney telling him to do this. Absolutely. Because they're trying to fester the civil war between police and citizens. Absolutely. It's exactly their function. And so it takes the heat off of their ass. Right. And the cops can be the fall guy for this. Uh, corporate counsel that was directing the deaths of people there, human beings. You know, all they have to do is buy one minute sometimes. You know, if somebody's in an accident and there's first responders on the scene, there's an emergency going on. 
somebody's, you know, damage. A, a human being, life is in danger. And when corporate counsel directs law enforcement to enforce policy during those times, 30 seconds can be mean life or death. And they know this, but the cop is going to be the fall guy. And they've done this over and over and over again, especially as we're seeing everything come down this year. Um, you know, it's just it's foul. Absolutely horrifying. So let's get back to the attorneys, Boston CBS Local, Somerset, Massachusetts. The Somerset man whose right to practice law has been revoked is facing federal charges stemming from allegations that he stole about $300,000 from two investors who were promised hefty profits within three months. Massachusetts State Secretary William Galvin alleges that 54 or 55 year old John Savalia Jr. spent the money on gifts to relatives, payment for life insurance premiums, and Red Sox season tickets. Wow. The U.S. District Attorney's Office said Sylvia was arrested Friday and charged in a complaint with mail and wire fraud, conviction, conviction carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison and a fine of $250,000. Well, so, more than that attempted murder. Did you see that? Yeah. It's a financial crime. He defrauded other attorneys, by the way, other bankers, investors. Isn't that nice? The complaint also named Richardson Consulting, LLC, there's your limited liability corporation. Absolutely. And Beltway Realty, LLC. Let's see how much uh, limited liability they have now that they're under the bus as a new surety. Yeah. Which were two companies controlled by the suspect that were allegedly used to perpetrate the scam. Sylvia's attorney was not listed in the federal case file. Cha-ching! Under civil forfeiture, everybody's going to cash in on those limited liability companies and their insurance corporations. Cha-ching! Come on. This stuff needs to stop. Everybody patronizing these attorneys needs to look at what they're doing. They're patronizing this thing, calling it their father. Jesus specifically says, call no man your father. Matthew 23. Not even Christ. Stop doing these things. Patronize your own houses. Now, what did we uh, find him guilty of first, Tammy? Kidnapping. And then human trafficking. Human trafficking. And then um, genocide. Right. This is from the IndianaLawyer.com. Man is first charged under federal human trafficking law this came down February 5th 2014 US Attorney Joe Hogsett announced Tuesday that his office has filed a nine count federal indictment against an Indianapolis man for human trafficking these are first of a kind charges in Indiana according to US Attorney's Office in the Southern District of Indiana the charges against Jerry Mitchell include sex trafficking, sex trafficking of a child, and transporting a child to engage in prostitution. His arrest comes after federal and local authorities join forces to combat human trafficking and child exploitation. Now, what took him so long to get their ass in gear in the first place? Because they, they wanted to continue patronizing the bank. Right. So. This is coming down, everybody. Again, this is more evidence of the surety at Northern Holding Corporation at work on the new surety now. Not the human beings anymore. We've taken that off you. Okay, so the, pres the presumption here is life. And if you haven't harmed anybody... Okay, they're to leave you alone. That's part of the public law, what we're trying to get the system under. Okay? And it seems to be heading that direction, but um, 
I don't know, we just need a little more media coverage of this or some more people to get it or something. Um, man. Anyways, um, he's accused of transporting women and female minors to facilitate their prostitution activities and on a number of occasions sexually assaulting the female minors. He also allegedly made a video recording of the sexual abuse of a 16-year-old victim. This case was a result of a collaborative investigation spearheaded by the Indiana Protection for Abuse and Trafficked Humans, one of 42 task forces nationwide funded by the department to address the issue of human trafficking. IPATH was created in 2006 and is chaired by the United States Attorney's Office and the Office of the Indiana Attorney General. The attorney, yeah, the attorney general who uh, basically thumbed his nose at me when um, I was uh, firing off evidence to him. Okay. See, the, the group meets regularly to collaborate on cases and projects, provide additional training to law enforcement, and raise awareness in our community about human trafficking. If convicted, Mitchell faces up to life in prison. Right. Now, if they continue this and protect humanity, then they can have special drawing rights. However... They don't get anything if they're not protecting human beings, period. And I think that what we're seeing now is that they're turning and saying, oh, I better do something, because otherwise we're just dead, broken, busted here. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. This is more, this is Patriot News than anything, but uh, list for impeachment supporters um, you know, trying to impeach the president, trying to get Congress to impeach the president. Yeah, that's Senate uh, has the power. That's that's Congress. It's a joke. That's gaining more steam, but yeah, again, that's a diversionary tactic. Well, and the majority of the sheeple listening right now are thinking still that Clinton, Bill Clinton, was impeached. He was never impeached. They put on a really good show, but and if I ask just the average citizen. Uh, about the impeachment, they'll tell me, yes, he was impeached. No, he was never impeached. He was never impeached. They put on a really good show to make you feel like he was going to be, or he, he could have been, or maybe he was. He was never impeached. Nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened. And now, of course, they're they're reselling that to you in the media right now. Um, yeah, and yeah. And Hillary to say she was. She's saying, gonna forgive him. So yeah. they're 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 they're. they're uh, pushing this forgiveness idea yep, you know absolutely and that's that's the foundation of their system forgive them and then and then you know pick another one of them that one is just corrupt not the not the whole lot of them or anything just that one so keep recusing your judge and firing your attorneys and hiring more attorneys and never ever ever go look and and you know see what fee splitting is and the reason that an attorney is required to uh, have another attorney in place before they uh, step out of the case is because of fee splitting. It allows the next attorney to, to cash in and the previous attorney cashes in on the case throughout the case. He's never really gone. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth attorney, they all get fee uh, shares under the action known as fee splitting. So you're never really getting them out of the picture. They just make a really good appearance. And it's the same with the judicial recusals. Why would you want to recuse them? They're all corrupt. You know, yeah, speaking of that, uh, Rand Paul was uh, out there uh, making a plea, you know, that the you know, the GOP doesn't uh, turn around here. Uh, they're going to find Texas being a blue state in 10 years. And uh, I read that into a YouTube video earlier. And, you know, it just made me sick to think of another 10 years of Congress. All right. We were right here at the verge of, of, of casting these chains off of us. You know, of course, these... People that, you know, Rand Paul has been set up by his father, the good Congress guy, like there's such a thing. Uh, you know, 
there's a proper way and an improper way to human traffic. Yeah, as uh, <laughs> Judge Simon said in our USDC case, <coughs> freaking nutballs. Um, so, you know, I'm sorry for you people that, um, you know, got caught up into the Ryan Paul quote unquote movement, movement, but he was just another face of Congress. He's responsible for moving all the gold out of the country. That's what his book, uh, The Case for Gold, was all about. Now, everybody's wondering, well, where's the gold? Well, why don't you talk to Dr. Paul about that? Maybe he's got a better idea where the gold is, because we don't know. Well, you can read it in his book. It yeah. says where it went, you know, give it up, trade it for those LFRNs. And for everybody that, you know, their eyes are wide and they're like, oh my God, Texas is going to be a blue state, meaning uh, liberal or Democrat. Go back to the turn of the century, the 1900s, and um, look at the Democrats back then. They were the conservative party up until 1938 with star diseases. Uh, there was a paradigm shift in the 1930s, of course. Uh, the KKK was brought up by Simmons, which was, at that time, he was a Democrat, but he was uh, displaying characteristics of a conservative party, a Republican. Well, what had happened is that the paradigm shift, they shifted and became the Liberal Party, and of course it was the Democrats who came in in the 1960s, having already postured in the 1920s and 30s with affirmative action. Now, because there was no racism, because there was no sexism, who cashed in on that? Same Democratic, liberal, retarded, conservative, Republican, uh, liberal, independents. It's the same party. It's called insider trading. So if you want to set up your, your investment plan, you're going to develop a means of production, which was the KKK, invoking racism, promoting racism. And then you come in later as the same racist and you say, oh, we need to do something about this. And um, a blue state of Texas. Another parad paradigm shift is what they're trying to promote and sell us. Um, but it will not go that far. If sheep will finally wake up and realize uh, there are no parties, there are no countries, there are no anything, there's corporations. That's it. That's it. And, you know... I urge everybody to watch that, The Network, uh, 1974, The Network, and, um, you know, you can find clips of it on YouTube. Uh, I play clips of it all right here on these changingtimesradio.ning.com, and um, it, it's interesting to see, you know, it, especially Ned Beatty. Now, here's a primetime mainstream media, and Ned Beatty's going off on the television anchor. And he says, you, you've been meddling in, in corporate business here, and, and uh, I have a, a great offer for you. And he says, well, why do you want me? He says, you're in the media, dummy. Bottom line, you're in the media, dummy. You're the one that's supposed to promote my agenda. That's who the media is for. And, and if you want a look into ha hegemony, which is what that is, uh, to control power, uh, status quo uh, power and authority, you know, watch those. Study Bernays. Study Gromsky, Antonio Gromsky and his works and his theory on hegemony and, and state and civil society. You know, study the, the uh, consent and, and the force required to consent. Study fourth generation warfare. Study low intensity conflict. Look at the dynamics. Look at the characteristics and the tactics employed. And you will see that you are in the war. And you will also see how to get out of it. It only takes a little bit. And, you know, I've been told for years, that'll take me 20 years to get through that stuff. I've been doing this for 14 years. And um, it's it's not bad. It, it's worth it for humanity. Wake up. Things are not important. Human beings are, the, are the, everything. A any life on this planet you know, stop weighing these things in your hand. And when you come out with a weight that says a thing is more important than a human being, get out of here. Get away from me. Stay away from me and my family. Now, um, in my case, we 
met resistance with several clerks Absolutely. that were um, in the act of perpetuating, um, you know, obscuring the court record and keeping things off the court record. So I always brought a witness with me when I could and um, documented these things. And in one case, we, um, we witnessed a clerk altering my documents. Absolutely. And um, that was Rocco that was actually with me, and um, he did a declaration from his house to mine, which is the only way to do a declaration. Right. But, um, all right, aside from that, moving beyond that, we got, um, you know, back to the rooster coming home to roost, um, or nest. Trial rescheduled for St. Joseph County clerk's office worker accused in catfishing scam. St. Joseph County, Indiana, a woman accused of posing as two fake Marines. Now, I, I, I don't understand the writing in this. How can a woman um, pose as two Marines? But, all right, uh, looking beyond the uh, typographical. In order to coax thousands of dollars from Michiana residents was in court Wednesday. The trial date for Kim Savage has been moved to March 20th. The 44-year-old faces theft charges stemming from seven-year catfishing scam. Back in October, two women came forward to the St. Joseph County Police Department. The pair said Savage posed as two United States Marines serving overseas needing money for protective equipment. Again, uh... No, that, that's right. I mean, they they wear different masks. You know, all throughout time, there was this one woman years ago pretending to be Trudy. Okay, I, I won't say the last name. Well, then later <laughs> on, uh, she pretended to be this lady named Terry. Same pictures, different poses, and um, she was screwing males in the men's rights movement as a human agent. So she would sleep with these males, and then later she would come in and say, well, uh, you know, he, he slept with me or, or whatever else, trying to vilify them. But that was her position in the scheme of things as a human agent. So that's interesting that they, they're they nailing a human agent. Human, H-U-M-I-N-T, meaning human intelligent. They're there to garner human intelligence through human interaction. Yes, and you see them all over the place. Um, you know, I won't get into that right now. But um, anyways, the woman gave Savage uh, tens of thousands of dollars up until her arrest. Savage worked at worked as the head bookkeeper at the St. Joseph County Clerk's Office. The clerk's office is confident Savage didn't obtain or make any connection with the victims while she was at work. Aw, they cleaned their hands. They said, no, Yeah. her father forsaked her. She's forsaken by her father. That's beautiful. I don't know her. I don't know her. I don't know her. Don't touch me. No, it's not us. She did that outside of her employment. That's funny. Now, so this isn't... Um, <laughs> Anybody that I dealt with, although I did deal with that counter, okay, so we'll be watching what happens on there because there are more involved that directly were in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1501 and perhaps even uh, 1506. Um, the, um, you know, when, when you assault a process server. Right, and Robert Richard was one of our process servers at, at several times. Yep. So, let's see, uh, uh, another one here in Indiana, school counselor faces sexual exploitation charges. This is in Muncie, Indiana. Newcastle school counselor faces sexual exploitation, exploitation charges for allegedly giving male students drugs and alcohol and taking nude photographs of them, often with hidden cameras. That 
that's what psychiatrists do. Yep. U.S. Attorney Joe Hogsett announced the charges against Daryl Hughes, 55, of Muncie, at a news conference Monday. Okay. So, sick. Hughes faces one count of sexual exploitation and two counts of attempted sexual exploitation. The Star Press, the Courier Times, and Newcastle report he could face 15 years in prison if convicted. Authorities say the charges stem from incidents dating from 2008 and involve five youths who met Hughes after struggling with disciplinary issues at school. At school, disciplinary issues at school. So the same psychiatrist is telling your boys, you're a bad boy. You're in trouble. You're a bad boy. And then he took advantage of these children at school. The Hitler youth camps. Hughes was arrested Friday. Um, and this is dated February 3rd. So this is um, probably a week ago Friday. Um, Newcastle Community School Superintendent Steve Fisher says he has been suspended without pay from his job as a behavioral consultant. So yeah, he's a damn psychiatrist. Yeah, he's a monster. That was his function. That is what he does. He drugs children, rapes and molests them, and gets away with it because he's telling those same children that they're bad. And there's not only five. How long was he in that position, did it say? No, it doesn't, but it says he was 55, so I'm guessing a good number of years. Or if you go to uh, jimhopper.com, Jim Hopper maintains that one in six male children are sexually abused before they're 16 years old. One in four females are sexually abused before they're 16 in the United States Incorporated. And this occurs day after day. This is their function. The function of psychiatrists is to rape your children. To molest them, to take pictures of them, and sell them to judges and attorneys after they've been groomed and taught that they're bad. Given drugs to forget what happens to them, although they have the physical reactions of what happens to them. Now these children are going to be criminalized over and over again because they're acting out, right? They've been sexually abused by a male. Now, there's different levels of egregious activity. A female raped by a male can handle that. A male raped by a female can handle that. A female raped by a female or a male raped by a male, it's so much worse. There's so many different stigmas that are related with that, so many different shame factors and everything else. These children need us. They require our protection. Where is everybody? Yes, they're being held accountable now, but there needs to be more. There's a counselor in every school. Get them out of the school. Get your children out of public schools. Don't put them in those positions. Yeah, and this crap goes on. Um, Two weeks looking ago, at that, that same website here then um, for Indiana, South Bend Council. Here we go. There's our corporate council attorneys working for all the South Benders, uh, you know, behalf, representing them. They approve sewer rate increases. Isn't that nice? Right. Keep patronizing them. South Bend Common Council met Monday night to discuss a controversial sewer rate hike that would incrementally increase rates 5% every year for the next three years. Three more years of this type of government governance. How, how much can we we take? Now, first of all, early on in the case, we put in the um, general welfare clause to um, um, get back to the original contract with the treasury. Right, get back to the original contract. So now the sewers are run by a corporation. According to the general welfare, 
The corporations are supposed to be here for our benefit, not to prey on us as they have been. Okay. So now these fifteen percent increase in the next three years is already on top of the thirty percent they're already getting. So that's a forty five percent tax. Keep patronizing it. Keep calling it your daddy. Now, these are rate increases. Not taxes. They're sold to you as rate increases. That's aiding and abetting the known enemy of mankind if you pay those. Yep, back in Indiana again. More sick garbage here. I mean, as, as, as if marriage licenses aren't bad enough. Indiana Senate Committee passed the same-sex marriage amendment 8 to 4. Yep, so now they're hooking in the um, gays, homosexuals, lesbians. They're getting them in the same system where they can rent each other, rent their rights to be, buy their rights to be, and it's all founded on privacy laws enacted by the same criminal that's stealing your rights. So... It, for example, if two people are in love with each other <coughs> and they're not married, they don't have a right, according to the criminal enterprise, of inheritance. Now, if you want to accept this, keep patronizing it. If you don't want to accept this, stop patronizing it and calling it your father. It's preying on humans equally. Those are your equal rights. Now, Homosexuals could, just got the right to be raised by court process. Now, I could give a rat's ass about, you know, who you want to be with, I guess. It doesn't really affect, as long as it doesn't affect me or cause anybody harm, you know, that's that's all the public law is about, you know. But now they're going to get, um, you know, these people in same-sex marriages into marriage contracts, which is uh, further in bed you know, with the state, the federal state. Right. When in all reality, they already are. If they're married by the intent, they're married by intent. Why Stop. are you seeking the approval right. of this federal state that's preying on you? And that's what allows them to get at your inheritance. You're the heir. Every time you file a will, it allows the attorneys to get in between you and the inheritance. The action of interpleading. Stop patronizing this thing. Well, okay, so that's that's about it for um, the news, and we've been on three hours, and um, I guess it's time to give you folks a, a rest here, and Time for me to calm down a little bit here. This stuff's very upsetting. Absolutely. I'll have this up within a few minutes, folks. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to After Hours with Bo and Tammy, these changing times radio.ning.com. Be well. Be well.